Ravens, an excerpt from Desert Oracle, Volume 1, by Ken Lane. On an evening walk through Onaga Valley a week or so back, I saw this pair of ravens. The same ravens I've seen for years and years in this one particular place. They've raised several rounds of children, who then grew up and move away, and still come to visit and argue every now and then. But day to day, it's just this pair in their place. You'll see them on a Joshua tree at sunrise, talking it over, watching that yellow ball of fire rising over the boulders. You'll see them in the afternoons, buzzing the coyotes or my dog, or cackling at a mountain bicyclist racing by. But until this moment, I had never seen their home. They live in a small cave about a hundred feet over the valley, in a wall of rock facing north so it's shady and cooler during our long summer, and I got the feeling they were embarrassed that the humans who so often walk these trails had finally spotted their secret lair. After all, anyone who regularly talks back to ravens in some sad approximation of raven calls, is not someone who should be able to spot their home, even after a decade or so of looking for it. But there it was, with all kinds of junk on the rock ledge, things they found, mostly sticks of some kind, a real desert homestead. They rushed inside, and I'm certain hoped I wouldn't remember, and sure enough now I can't quite spot the small shadow of the rock wall where the ravens have made their home. What do we know about ravens? More all the time, but they remain mysterious. In the wild, ravens can live for decades. Domesticated ravens have lived for 45 years. While a flock of crows is called a murder, some colorful terms for groups of ravens include an unkindness and a conspiracy. But you don't need to get clever about it, just call them ravens. The raven is the largest and heaviest of the corvids, and the bird we call the common raven is found all over the northern hemisphere. They lead about anything and they don't mind working for it. Ravens use tools like humans. They'll use sticks or wire or rocks to get food, break shells, hide from other animals. And once they figure out something clever, they like to teach the other ravens about the discovery, like dropping hard-shelled nuts on a road so that passing cars will break the shells for them. Ravens are masters of deception. They'll act like they're storing food in one place, but then they'll casually drop it somewhere else. The book of Genesis tells the story of Noah trusting a raven to find land after the great flood. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Why Genesis then tries to get us believe Noah sent out a simple-minded dove To do the same thing is one of those many Bible mysteries. The Norse god, Odin, traveled with a pair of ravens named Thought and Memory. They brought him news from around the world, which makes sense, because ravens have a rich and complex language. And like human language, raven language varies from place to place. The ravens in my chunk of the desert will pronounce things differently than ravens from stovepipe wells or Lee's Ferry.